Hi, and welcome to Tea Life with Tiffany. I am your host, Tiffany Denise. Thank you for joining me and my cadre of amazing friends as we sit and sip tea and talk everything from pop culture to tea culture. Tea life is what your life should be. Calm, cool, and collected, just like a cup of tea. I have the pleasure of interviewing Justin Omeka, director of the Classical Theater of Harlem's production of Romeo and Juliet, playing right now through July 27th at the Marcus Garvey Amphitheater in Harlem. So stay tuned, we'll be right back with Justin. Denise and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Tea Life with Tiffany. I am your humble host and I'm so happy to be here today with you to have a cup of tea with this gentleman here, mm -hmm. writer, director, and actor, mm -hmm. Justin Ameka. Welcome to Tea Life with Tiffany. Thank you very much. It's <laughs> nice to be here. Thank you. So we're drinking tea. We're drinking um, a blend that I call Black Beauty. It's a black tea with delicious. florals. Delicious, right? <laughs> yes, and it then is. then we have these oh, amazing yes. chocolate chip scones here. It's simply divine. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so Justin has this amazing production up that he directed that's going on currently um, at the Amphitheater in Harlem at Marcus Garvey Park and it is Romeo and Juliet. Um, it's produced by Kirk Navarro, produced by the Classical Theater of Harlem, correct. right? And directed by yourself. That's great. So I was there for opening night and I, it, you know, I, I have such a passion and love for theater. I always tell people that if it wasn't going to be tea, it was going to be theater. Mm -hmm. um, but now I'm figuring out a way to bring back the theater really just in my life, just period. Because it was just so magnificent. Thank you. You did a wonderful Thank job you. with Thank that. Thank you so much. And it, and it goes on until the 27th. Correct. Right? This is the 27th every night except Monday at 7.30 p.m. Yes. So you have 20 years experience mm -hmm. in the theater. Yeah. Tell us about um, um, your your life 20 years ago in theater and where it is today. And did you see yourself in it for this long, for the long haul? Well, you know, I, I actually began theater before that, you know, as, okay. a, as a child, I, I was interested in, in acting. Well, my mother really kind of saw it in me. I was kind of a wild child, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. I liked attention. I liked, you know, to, to have fun. I just, you know, I was very gregarious. So my mother took me to a class, an acting class, and, you know, I was just, I enjoyed it. So I just started doing everything that I could to get me on stage, you know, mm -hmm. anything to get me on stage, I would audition for it, a class, I'd take a class, I'd do a program, you know, and I originally started as an actor, and yes. I would audition for anything, but as I got to be older, around high school, shortly after I graduated high school, I started to kind of see the, the disparities of what I, I could be cast for, what I could audition mm -hmm. for, you know, and so then I became a little bit discouraged you know, with, with certain limitations that I saw in casting and opportunities, you know. Um, so then I started trying to think about, I love the theater, but I didn't really know where my place was in the theater, yeah. you know. Um, I just felt like I, I needed to be a part more of the storytelling process and try and expand the reach of, of the stories. So then I started, you know, directing and writing shows with, with my brother or my people in the community. We just started doing projects. Uh, and that was around 20 years ago when I started directing, you okay. know. Um, and since that time, you know, I've done original plays as well as classic plays such as Lorraine Hansberry's Raising the Sun, yes. Dutchman, you know, as well as Shakespeare, Macbeth, uh -huh. and uh -huh. Tennessee Williams, Glass yes. Menage. You've been all over the spectrum. It's all over the bio. All right, all right. <laughs> Again, anything that I could get my hands on, yes. you know, that's always been my, my attitude. So what was college like? for you? Well, I went um, to Oberlin College. Yes. And, you know, I originally thinking that I wanted to, you know, train and be an actor. But as I said, I started to kind of reevaluate my ambitions. And instead of majoring in theater, I majored in African American studies. Mm -hmm. And then really just started, you know, became a historian at that time. Just kind of researching a lot of the, um, 
the background for, for some of the, the blues that I was feeling at that time, you know, in, in regards to, to theater. And so I just, you know, it became really kind of um, entrenched in, in the history of the blues. You know, I did a lot of research in, in the blues as it impacts music, as it impacts dance, as it impacts art, and then I started thinking, well, how does it impact theater? Yes, you know, how does yes. the, a blues aesthetic, you know, impact theater? And it became interested in trying to tell stories in a bluesy way in, yes. in theater, you know. <laughs> so the blues mm -hmm. and the culture and bringing that into theater. Right. That's kind of what you did with Romeo and Juliet. Right, right. Like it was just such a layered tapestry of just culture and with the, with Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I noticed when I was in the audience is that I know how how important it is for the actor to be able to actually connect with the text mm -hmm. in order to deliver it. And one of the things I remember telling um, my friend who went to go see it, I said, you know, even if you don't understand Shakespeare, uh -huh. you understand everything that's happening here because the actors have such a command of the language mm -hmm. that anybody that sees this, really, if they're right. listening, can get it. Right. Well, you know, the, the, once the actor owns the language for themselves, yes. you know, so that they really need these words, whatever words playwright has given them you know that the challenge for an actor is to make those words their own so that they need those words to express the thoughts and emotion you know? and so sometimes with, with Shakespeare we, we feel like it's something outside of us you know so then it almost feels like an imitation of something that we're doing and then so it's harder for the audience to follow right because you can you know consciously subconsciously sense that is it some kind of imitation that's happening? It's you know? not really authentic. Right, but when it, when it comes from a place inside, you know, that, that, that the actor is connected to, then it invites the audience in in a way that allows them to enjoy it. So what is it about your directing style that gives space and room for an actor to, to grow in that way? Because the director, in, in my opinion, is is there to drive mm -hmm. the um, energy and to really, really kind of infuse the intent mm -hmm. of what it is that you want to bring across. And mm -hmm. you have to have a really good connection with your actors mm -hmm. and actresses to do that. So yes. what is it about your style that well, made know, that I, come across something? One, different? I just try and create a vision Mm -hmm. um, a clear vision, right, that, that, that gives the, the cast and the production team a, a, a sense of clarity in terms of the world that we're creating. Where are we, right, you know? Right. Um, and then also create a space that allows each individual artist to contribute who they are within the context of that world, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's my job, I feel like, to provide the world that we're in, and then it's their job to fit inside that that world, you know? And that's, mm -hmm. but that's a negotiation that happens in the rehearsal process. And sometimes it's easier, and sometimes it's harder with different actors, depending on where they're, where they're coming from. But, you know, I mean, as, I, as a director, I really, you know, try and challenge myself to, to allow the actor to bring who they are into the room as opposed to me figuring out who I want that character to be before I get there and then trying to get that actor to be just like that character in my, in my head. And sometimes it can be tricky because I do have a very strong and specific vision for, for these works, you know. But I always try and, uh, you know, the best work comes when, when, when you allow them to... to to engage the creative artist because the, the actor can come up with stuff that you, you I you never would have thought, I would have thought of and I might think this is a great idea yeah. the night before but then I get in the room and they make a choice I say whoa you know that, that's, that's blo that blows it all you know that takes the, the, the play in another direction right. you know so yeah. it, it's that balancing act and I, but I love the process that's what I love about theater yeah. you know and that, that's what makes it it's an so artistic high. Yeah. an artistic process you know and it's not like we're just getting together to put together something that already happened right. we, are, we are creating it yeah. each time so we're like every play it's like we're, we're creating the new play you know when, when I was, whatever text I'm working with I, I always feel like this is the first time this play has ever been done yeah. you know because in essence it had with us with the, with the cast we're on, this is the first time we've ever done this <laughs> yeah. so you know with this team of people so cool 
So oh, you know, man. it's a, and then to keep that sense of excitement, you know, Very the sense fun. of magic. You know. Very magical. I was gonna say it was the music, it was the dance, it was the choice of interview and the, the hip hop piece yes. and um then the then the endangered symbols. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, on the set. Yeah. Like what what's behind that? Tell us the story well, behind that. Well, you know, it's part of a, a larger idea just in terms of incorporating uh, the richness of Harlem's aesthetic, broader than Harlem, you mean the African and African aesthetic, you know, right. incorporating the aesthetic as a way to help tell Shakespeare's story, you know, and so a lot of it was realizing, okay, well, I want to have stars on the set at some point, you know, right. when, we get, when we get to the end or at night, and then tr- just trying to think of creative ways within the context of the African diaspora to represent stars, what, what stars, and that, you know, <coughs> Traditionally, we, we find meanings in stars. We, we, we stories. We tell stories as we look at the configurations of stars. You know, so then trying to think of something also that translates that that's not just the stars, and it led me to symbolism. And, you know, and symbols within the West African traditions that I just kind of become familiar with in my own study. So all the, the symbols that you see are all very carefully picked to, to, uh, with specific meanings that reflect the themes of the play. Well, can, you you, know? can you give us a few of those? And the, and the symbols for everyone, they're actually built into the set pieces and they are illuminated when the when it's this because this is done this play is done outdoors so you know when it dusk and it's nightfall the, the symbols are illuminated it's absolutely gorgeous yeah so tell us about some of the connections with the symbols and the themes of the play well you know it's interesting like so the west and the knickers symbols share some of the, the symbols like so the heart for instance yes. you know um, but we in the West tend to think of that as love, but in, in, um, in Dinkra, it's endurance, mm. pose, you know, the, the heart, and that was just kind of an interesting, uh, interesting idea again that, that, that the heart re- reflects love, but it also re- re- reflects perseverance, yeah. persistence. Mm-hmm. And endurance, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is really at the, the heart of, of Romeo and Juliet's passionate struggle to be together, you right. know, all the way in, until the end, you know. Mm-hmm. Also, other symbols on there are unity, you know, it's, it's the, the play is trying to reflect the struggle for unity that the prince is, is working so desperately to try and get the people to work together, come together. to come yeah. together, you know, so just a few ideas that are yeah, reflected that is in really the set. Nice. Well, I definitely got the um, Caribbean, the mm-hmm. Caribbean vibe. Mm-hmm. It's very alive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, 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 right. I loved it. Well, you know, I, I wanted to... You definitely touched, you definitely covered the diaspora. The type of diversity, so often when we talk about diversity, mm-hmm. it, people tend to think, oh, we'll get, you know, two black people, one Latino person, right. one Asian person, right. one, we'll just put a little, and that's diversity, you right. know? Um, and that's not, I mean, that is a form of diversity, but it's not really the form of diversity I'm interested in as much as intracultural diversity. And I think that's really what we lack a lot in America when it comes to non-white people. We don't get a lot of intracultural diversity, you, you know? I mean, that's usually something that's just rever- reserved for, for white stories and white privilege. You know I mean? You can go see a, a white play or a white movie and see white people from all different types of backgrounds, from France, from Italy, you know, rich white people, poor white, educated white people, you know, but then when we're dealing with our diversity, it's it's like one black person, two, you know, but we don't get to see the diversity within the culture. So then we start to think that that blackness is only this, (laughs) you see what I'm saying? In fact, there's infinite amount of possibilities within every cultural tradition, you know, so I really wanted to, to show a, again the uh, in in this this instance the kind of the, some of the strife and conflict that comes as a result of that diversity. Mm-hmm. You know, so we have a West Indian cultural tradition that's very different than a Black American cultural tradition, and sometimes they work together, and sometimes they work against each other. You know, and but we don't really talk about that a lot. And I, you know, I have an opportunity, so I wanted to 
uses production as a way to talk about the diversity of our culture, celebrate it, yes. but then also look at some of the challenges it presents. Right, you are, so you are more than an actor, more than a director and a writer, <laughs> clearly you're a social activist. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I think, you know, I think all artists in some way are, you know, yes. I mean for me anyway, because yes. that's, that's the, the function of art is mm -hmm. to reflect mm -hmm. life, you right. know. And not to just reflect life, but, but comment on life. You know, Harry Belafonte always says, art is not just what life is, it's what it's you think life should be. Yes, and what it is, what it is, the possibilities. The possibilities, you know. Yeah. And, 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 and again, revealing infinite possibilities mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. I, I love it, I love it. So what are some of the things that, um, what... The play is coming to an end on the, on the 27th. 27th. July 27th. Um, have you all been able to reach out to youth groups or summer camps? And mm -hmm. Are young people like brought in to see this play? And well, you know, I, I, every time I've been to see it, one of the rewarding things is seeing families in the audience, you know, and I've seen at every show there's kids as young as. There's babes in arms, yes. you know, which are normally like taboo in theaters. You're not yes. supposed to bring no babies <laughs> into a theater, <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> um, but you know, they have young, they have you know, young children, all into, you know, to, to elders in the community, all enjoying it. Um, I, you know, my job is, hasn't been as much to reach out specifically, right, right, right. but uh, the theater has done a wonderful job yes. of reaching out to local community groups, local church oh, groups. Good. You know, we even last Saturday had a youth church group come and do a pr performance before our, our play, oh, you know, reflecting their work. They, a certain church was doing um, a, a Harlem Shakespeare summer camp, and they, their work culminated by doing a performance before our show. That, that was really profound you know oh, wonderful wonderful yeah. so what is your hope or what is your vision i like the word vision better than hope mm -hmm. what is your vision uh, for mm -hmm. theater mm -hmm. um, as we move forward whether it be <coughs> the, the cultural standpoint or, mm -hmm. or from a broader perspective what is it that you envision yourself contributing um I don't know, the next 20 years yeah, to yeah. this art form well i, I think <laughs> As I said, in the theater, theater tends to be a very conservative place. Mm -hmm. When looking at, you know, the the African or African American aesthetic mm -hmm. in artistic forms such mm -hmm. as music, dance, and visual arts, you can, you know, very clearly identify certain like Im impulses that African American culture has done. I really like to. Um, I take inspiration from a lot of the older jazz artists, such yeah. as Duke Ellington and Billie Holiday and mm -hmm. Charlie Parker, and, and you know, again, where you, you take a quote-unquote classic tune and reimagine it, mm -hmm. you know, and make it make it your own, right. you know, with, with a unique aesthetic. So as when John Coltrane plays My Favorite Things, it becomes a brand new song right. that doesn't replace or threaten what Oscar and Hammerstein did or what Julie Andrews did when she sang My exactly. Favorite Things, right? Mm -hmm. It be becomes a, a wonderful celebration of the song it, that reaches a, a new community, a new cultural experience. Yes. I like to do the same thing with theater, you know, yes. and, and, and kind of inspire us to look at classical theater and the possibilities within classical theater in a new way so that it's not so much again we're trying to create these museum pieces right. of, of for people to just look at it and be look, like oh right but, but yeah. productions where people really <laughs> feel an active connection yes. to, to who they are and how they are you know yeah. and it's really exciting for me yeah. having done Midsummer Night's Dream yes. and, and Macbeth and mm -hmm. Glass Menagerie and Death of a Salesman in, in this way it it's exciting to see the possibilities within these stories yes. when you know black and brown cultures are allowed to to be a part of the creative process and the, the storytelling you know and I think it's so it, it's exciting for the audiences it, it, it makes the audiences inspired and excited to hear these stories in a new way you know and really the, the possibilities are or unlimited. That's right. Well, I tell you what, <laughs> he certainly has, I mean, his style of directing and the actors, like I said, they're amazing. So I am 
just so inspired to <laughs> open up those books, open up my Shakespeare and read and get back on that stage one of these days. So um, I want to encourage you all to go and see this play. If you are visiting Harlem or if you're in Harlem or in New York City or in the tri-state area, you have to go and you see. Gotta you gotta come check it out. You gotta, because that's a beautiful thing about it's theater. Even, it's live. It's you know? live. And the live. thing is, you know, people always ask me, oh, I can't see. Can y'all see the videotape? It, mm, nope. <laughs> You gotta no, be there. That's it. You know, that, and that's the kind of the there. best, right? That's the brilliance and tragedy of theater. It's is true. You gotta be there. And if you miss it, you miss it. You miss it. <laughs> it you is know? true. And there's no, there's no, you know, redoing it. So we have until July 27th. Yes. You know, and it's free. It's All free. you gotta do is walk up and, <laughs> and see it. It really does it. it. The pride that the community takes in this production on both sides, the actors yes. on stage and the audience members. It really does feel like Broadway uptown. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know, it's and one of the things night. that I was happy about, I was happy to see that in the audience, that it was a predominantly audience of people of color. Mm -hmm. That meant a lot. That's, that's saying, that that's says saying a lot. A lot. That says a lot. I, mean, I was like, okay. Every theater in the country is struggling to try and tap into that audience. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, so I'm just thrilled. And just mm -hmm. congratulations on the work that you're doing. What's your next oh, production? You. Do you know yet? I'm not sure yet. Okay. Still, just got a couple <laughs> ideas in the works. You okay, know, well, you'll I'm, be seeing keep you on my radar. Yeah, that's Justin. right. That's right. It's been wonderful. Thank you all so much. Is there a website or anything you want to leave us with well, before we close out? Well, you can go see you know, classicaltheaterofharlem.org and find out more information about the production. Um, but really, come check us out. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you all. We'll be right back. Bye. Two families that are one and the same. Had a grudge, reason, new reason to bleed. They say love is patient and love is kind. When it comes to your love, would you be willing to die? I hate the word. I hate hell. I'm not to use the Thank you all for joining me today here on Tea Life with Tiffany. It's so wonderful taking this journey with you. Um, today was so special for me because I am truly, truly passionate about theater and what it can do to not only deliver uh, messages from those writers of yesteryear, but how, how theater can actually transform the world that we live in. And I have to say that this play, Romeo and Juliet, is, is, is a jewel and it's a gem. The way that the actors have communicated the text um, so wonderful and so beautifully and how the tapestry of the African diaspora has been layered. Uh, what Justin and this, and this production team has created is truly phenomenal. So we definitely want you to go and support um, this production. And thank you once again for joining me for another episode of Tea Life with Tiffany. We'll be back for another episode real soon. Thank you, and we're out. <laughs>